So today I'm going to move this gooseberry bush. Spring is a great time to move small fruiting shrubs. It gives them a long season where they can get their root system reestablished and then they can uh, survive through the winter. And you want to move them before they come out into their full leaf expression. So you can see the leaves are just starting to come out on this gooseberry. So this is an okay time to move it before it starts the process of budding out and flowering and fruiting because you're going to disrupt that process if you try and move it when, when it's spending energy on that. So this gooseberry has been in this spot for probably six or seven years. Uh, it's pretty happy here on the north side of a greenhouse. Gooseberries don't need a lot of full sun. They're pretty happy with sun part of the day. Uh, so they're a great shrub as well as black currants and red currants to kind of stick in marginal places in your garden, places that maybe are against a fence or a wall. They don't mind and they'll still grow pretty vigorously and they'll also fruit really nicely. Gooseberries are super delicious. So I'm moving it because it's in the way of the path. It's a little bit spiky. Um, so we find that we're always brushing up against it. We want to move it into a spot where it's out of the way, where it can sprawl a little bit. So the first thing I'm going to do before I move it is I'm going to prune it. So this hasn't had its annual pruning yet. Uh, generally what I would do is take out some of the oldest branches and then trim it back so it stays out of the way, as well as remove any uh, broken pieces of wood that maybe uh, had damage from the winter time. So I'm going to do all that, but I'm going to take out a little bit more than I would usually. Gooseberries fruit on second, third, fourth year wood. Um, so I can take out anything that looks like it's older than that. I'm going to take those out in what's called a thinning cut. So I'm going to take all the way back. I'm going to cut that right to the ground. And so that's going to remove a branch right from the source. So I've got my small loppers, but I'm also just going to go one size up and use these guys. I find if it's if it's giving you a hard time, then it's a better idea to use a bigger set of loppers. I'm going to take that just as close to the ground as I can. And then I'm going to take off some of the ones that are growing closer to the ground to try and make it more of an upright habit instead of a low down one. And I'm also going to take off any of these little spindly growths from last year. They sort of will die back and it's better to focus on the branches that are already here than create more branches at this stage. I'm just going to take off some of the top growth as well to make it easier to move. So I'm not worrying too much about where I'm making these cuts or where the new branches are going to go. Uh, this is just to sort of make it easier when I pull it up to move around. This is a good compact size. Uh, it took out a lot of wood, but it's still, there's lots here to photosynthesize. There's lots of leaves, there's lots of branches uh, and branches of various sizes and shapes. It's a good idea to prep your hole and then you can just move it straight in and then it's less stressful for the plant. So I'm going to put it right here on the edge of our patio against this wall and there's a grape here and then some tulips. So unfortunately I'm going to move the tulips out of the way. And while it's tempting to amend the soil that you're putting something into with a lot of shrubs and small trees that really don't need super rich growing environments. They're pretty happy in whatever the medium is already. So you don't want to put it into like a super amazing uh, bed of like only compost or sheet manure because that's gonna be too much nutrition for the plant. It would be happier in something that's more similar to what it already has. So this soil is pretty similar to the soil over there. We've been amending it over the years with compost and it's got a fair amount of organic matter in it and yeah it should be pretty good for for the gooseberry shrub about as deep and wide as you imagine you're gonna get you can always uh change the size of the hole when you when you bring the plant over so let's go get the gooseberry i'm gonna just put my shovel into the soil in a nice circle around and I can hear it cutting through the roots. Gooseberries are a pretty shallow rooting plant. They're not like a taproot or 
anything that goes really, really deep, um, you can see some roots on the surface. So as you do this, you're going to be cutting through. And like I said, this has been here a few years, so some of these roots might be pretty thick. So you want a nice sharp shovel that can go through them. Ooh, and this is interesting. So gooseberries, if the branches touch the ground, they will actually start to root uh, in the ground. So here we've got a piece of branch that I noticed was against the soil, and it's actually grown a whole root system here along with a bunch of violets. So I'm going to take this piece and I detached it already with my pruning shears and I'm going to put this in a pot and I'm going to plant this somewhere else. Maybe I'm going to give it to a friend or do something else with it. But like I was saying about making sure that the root system matches the top growth, this one has a pretty wild amount of top growth for that small amount of roots that were just on the surface. So I'm going to take it back a little bit as well. There. So that looks good. So back to, back to digging. You can see it's starting to move, but I don't want to dig underneath it too much right now. I'm just making the hole establishing where the hole is going to be. All right, now I'm going to go around again and I'm going to go a little bit underneath and just try and figure out where those lateral roots go until it feels like it's going to lift up. Move that guy out of the way. Sometimes you'll hear a very satisfying little pop. Oh. And I want to try and keep as much of the soil on the root as I can here. I'm trying to stay away from the base of the plant. And that looks pretty good. Okay. So then what I'm going to do is, you could use a bucket, but I find something like a piece of tarp works really well and nope still attached just kidding okay that's got it so then I can just plop this over to the side and yeah, then I'm going to put it in its new location. Okay, so I'm just going to put that right down in there, pull the bag out. So I'd say what you want to do here is make sure that the roots that are there have a nice wide open fan, that they're sort of flattened against the ground and that they have room to spread out. Uh, and this is a good size hole, about the same size as it came from. Uh, there's some Johnny Jump Ups in here because they're everywhere. And so I'm going to fill it back in with the soil. And another thing I often add in here as an amendment is uh, bone meal. That stimulates root growth, which is really great uh, for a plant that's been moved because it's the roots mostly that you're concerned about. Um, and I just want to make sure, even though, like I said, gooseberries will just root if they have parts of their branches buried, you want all the roots to be covered, um, but you want the crown of the plant to, to stay above ground. All right. Then I'm just going to tamp it down with my foot just to fill in the gaps around there and smooth it out. So that looks great. I think that's a good shape. It's a good size and it's going to be happy in its new home. And the last thing I'm going to do is the most important thing and that is to water it. 
So giving the gooseberry a really nice deep watering and then doing this again later today, probably even again tomorrow, watering it whenever you feel like you can remember is gonna really help. When we moved it, we created air pockets in the soil all around the roots. Uh, and you really want the roots to just have enough moisture so that they don't dry out underground. And so they have enough contact with soil so they can immediately start growing into the soil. And the underground growth is what's going to mean the success of the above ground part of this plant. So I think this should be good. Give it a little bit more. And then, yeah, we'll check on this guy later in the season. But this is a gooseberry plant in its new home. Uh, it didn't take long and it got its annual pruning at the same time. And we ended up with a bonus uh, gooseberry plant as well.